Let's look at the elements of an execution architecture. These are the, the structural elements of it. Uh, there are three. There's the uh, subsystem, there's a component, and there's a thread. Now the basic components are those, so concurrent subsystems, which are large grain units of, uh, of the execution that perform a set of related functions. Then there is component or processes which have their own memory space and are res resident usually in a single node. We have threads which share the memory space of a single process. Concurrent subsystems subdivide the system into manageable number of subsystems that execute concurrently. These uh, usually you'll find these concurrent subsystems placed on separate servers, but this is not necessarily so. Certainly they execute um, quite independently and, and concurrently. So a large number of similar processes can be dealt with more easily if they're treated as a unit, for example, data acquisition subsystem, uh, rather than the numerous processes that comprise that. A process that has a high degree of internal concurrency, for example, a database server, is a very good, um, a, a good thing to have as a, a subsystem of, of itself. Concurrent subsystems tend to be fairly long-lived, that is, they'd fire up um, and continue running for as long as the system is running, um, as opposed to something which might um, start up and, and shut down uh, on demand. But modern systems tend toward the concurrent subsystem style. Uh, this is probably because um, the servers are readily available, and particularly as you go into uh, cloud-based computing where this whole idea of, of you know, restricted, um, the restricted computers or CPUs is just uh, gone away. It's not a consideration anymore. Examples of concurrent subsystems, in general, if you can put them on a separate server, they're a uh, subsystem. So the examples I've got there is the mail server, database server, domain name server, user interface, and business processes. Usually, these kind of things do sit on separate servers and you can consider them as a, a separate subsystem. Now whether an accounting system is a subsystem or um, you wanted to decompose that into say accounts payable, an accounts payable subsystem, you know, um, you, you can decompose it if you wish. And this is not to say that, that uh, things are subsystems by definition, um, but that um, a subsystem is a fairly large, coherent piece of um, functionality. The process models, by contrast, um, here it's useful to show the actual execution structure of the system. Processes do have their own resources. Uh, they do not have lower level processes. I mean, you, a process is, is about as, as uh, decomposed as you can go in terms of independent execution. Uh, they don't spread across um, don't spread across nodes. Uh, a component will run on a single node. That corresponds well, pretty well, to the conceptual architecture. But there can be complex interactions between processes. So examples of processes, we've got uh, business processes, usually executing as a single process. We have single applications, usually, and client applications, usually. Again, just exactly what is um, in a, a process as opposed to, I don't know, a collection of processes in, in a single component, um, it's very hard for me to say. Threads, now we get into difficult territory uh, because threads um, seem to enjoy a certain amount of popularity among uh, some, uh, some software architects, but other architects uh, tend or have said, look, if you don't if you can get away without threads, don't use them. Um, all right, we'll put that aside for the moment. Threads are a single execution pass through a common process. Um, they execute con concurrently within the memory space of a parent process. And so a process may have threads, and threads are contained within a process. All right, there is no particular notation for threads. Now, there was a presentation given. Uh, it's on infoq.com, and I can't at the moment remember who gave it. Um, but he talked about multi-threaded uh, systems and his strong advice, this, this person has worked with threads and multi-threaded systems for years, his strong advice is don't do it. 
Um, they are error prone, they're difficult to get right, they, they tend to be terribly, terribly difficult to try and debug and they tend to introduce lots of subtle bugs. So if you can avoid threads, do it. Characterization of uh, concurrent components. We have a large grain. We've got um, the concurrent subsystem obviously is bigger than a process. It usually has several processes. And process is a, a smaller unit. A thread is a smaller unit of execution again. All right, so we go from coarse grain to fine grain. Now we have to talk about communications among architecture components and we have some uh, diagramming conventions for these. We usually have a synchronous call. This is called return and that's normally indicated on the uh, diagram with a um, two, you know, two-sided arrow uh, from the caller to the callee. Asynchronous calls where there's a there's no response. There's simply a, a, a passing of a message and, and do with it what you will is indicated by a half-headed arrow. Um, and a call with a call back so you give some information, you're expecting some information back and you're waiting for it. Um, oh sorry, it does not wait for it. So you, you, you give some information, uh, you, you go off and do things, the, answer, the response comes back in due course. That we indicate with um, uh, this, this complicated uh, arrow with a removed return thread. Now the, the reason for the distinction between them and between the communication modes uh, and quite a significant uh, concern or has been quite a significant concern in the software architecture concerns the speed of communication. Now fairly obviously within a single component you've got a call return which goes via the, um, the stack if, the, if you're implementing a stack but it's uh, certainly just uh, very very fast it's within the uh, whole um, uh, the, the same execution space. A call between components, you're probably dealing with a call within the one, um, the one computer. So you, um, the point being there that you might be using local communication, but you're not firing up the external communication. So it will be slower than within process calls, but faster than between server calls. The slowest of all, uh, in comparative terms, is is the um, the call that does use for the internet, for example, the call that is external not only to the um, to the process concerned, but probably to the server, and you're calling between servers. Now here you're you're invoking all the middleware uh, and security that that involves uh, across the the communication network, and that will be slow by comparison to the others. Uh, we're not talking absolute speed because absolute speed in you know, a call between computers is pretty fast. Um, but in comparative terms, you, you, I, I tried to look for the um, the the speed of um, communication between processes, and I couldn't get a sensible answer. A lot of the um, the information they got talked about um, the context shifting speed and the consequences of that. Whereas what I wanted to find out was the relative speed of communicating between components on the same server and communicating between components on different servers. I, I haven't got an answer. I can presume that one is much slower than the other. So as a summary, an execution architecture has concurrent subsystems, processes and threads. Objects are aggregated into concurrent subsystems and processes. Um, and the, this, this distinction is very important for real-time systems, probably not so important for commercial systems.